This is a quick review of the information that you need to know from 240 that we're going to build on in 340. So here are a list of some of the topics, and these are node voltage dependent sources, phasers for when we do AC signals, which we're going to primarily be doing, the concept of superposition and Thevenin and equivalent. So let's go through some of these pretty quick. So first of all, circuit analysis. So we need to be able to solve for voltages and currents of a circuit. So there's a couple things that we can do. We have numeric type things where you basically plug in numbers and crunch numbers out. In this class, we're going to, in 340, we're going to be using LT spice, and so all of the numeric circuit analysis we can primarily do in LT spice, which means that in this class we're going to be using these analysis methods to do symbolic and at most we're going to be doing two equations and two unknowns because otherwise it gets too difficult and we're going to primarily use the node voltage method uh, so you need to know how to use lt spice for doing these type of analysis there's some tutorials on our web page over if you go over to the experiential learning center or the shop they have some tutorials and then there's some uh, other stuff on Learning Suite also. Okay, so we have circuits like this where everything is, is created with loops. And in this class, we're going to be labeling nodes. So these two circuits are equivalent. You can see that all of the connections on the bottom are given with this ground uh, symbol right here. And so all of these grounds are tied together in the program. Also, we took this top part and labeled it as a node. So anytime there's a node label, these are connected together. I like to call these schematics and these circuits, but that isn't really the absolute terminology. That's just the terminology that I use. Okay, so here's the node voltage method. So in the node voltage method, you're going to put a ground somewhere in the circuit. And then at each of the nodes, you're going to do a Kirchhoff's current law in order to solve it. So let's look at this uh, really quick. So here is the circuit. And the first thing you have to do is identify these essential nodes. So you can see this is a node, this is a node, and then we put our ground down on the bottom where we do this reference node. So we're going to label these nodes as V1 and V2. So this would be the same thing if you went into the lab and you took your multimeter, put the ground terminal here and measured the voltage there and there. That's exactly what would happen in this node voltage method. Okay, so now that we have these nodes and then we're gonna write KCL equations. So we start right here at one. And so you see I have one, two, three branches. So I'm going to have V1 minus 10 divided by this resistor, V1 minus zero divided by this resistor, V1 minus V2 divided by that resistor. So this is the KCL equations for node one. This is the KCL for node two. And then we have two equations and two unknowns and we can solve them. And if we go through and do all this solving, you know, we typically use uh, substitution in order to solve these two equations and two unknowns. If you're doing all numeric, you can go and use a website like this Wolfram Alpha to solve for these two voltages. Okay, so then we, we can do the same thing in LT spice. So you basically build this circuit in LT spice and you can label the nodes or just measure the voltages and then you're done. So it's way faster if you're doing all numeric in LT spice. Okay, so now we have to talk about dependent sources. So there's four different types of dependent sources. You can see that this one is a voltage, to voltage source depending on a voltage signal. This one is a current source dependent on a voltage, voltage source dependent on current, and current dependent on current. And so when we go through and use these dependent sources, you're going to have a source that's dependent on some other point in the circuit. Uh, here again are these three configurations, and we are going to use dependent sources because dependent sources are the essence of how you create amplifiers. So in order to create an amplifier, you have to take some signal and increase it. It gets increased by using dependent sources. So you need to understand 
how to use dependent sources in order to create amplifiers, which is the main emphasis of this class. So in LT Spice, lots of times you see the dependent sources are drawn with these little diamonds or triangles. And in LT Spice, they're basically just sources, but then they have a little equation. So this equation right here, it says that this current is 20 times the voltage of known V1. So it's going to take the voltage from here, reference to ground, multiply it times 20, and it's going to create that in the current source. So this is how we draw them in LT Spice. So there's basically active elements and passive elements. And so the active elements are all of your sources. They can be independent or dependent voltage sources or current sources. And then we have passive elements where we can put in resistors, inductors, and capacitors. We're going to primarily do resistors and capacitors. We are not going to be using inductors in this class. Okay, so now a lot of times we're going to use sinusoidal sources. You can kind of see here the equations of amplitude frequency and then the angular for frequency omega. And this is how we characterize a sinusoidal source. In order to solve with sinusoidal sources, we use phasers. So phasers are based on Euler's identity, and we're basically coming down here and we're grabbing the amplitude of your cosine term and the phase of the cosine term, and that becomes a complex number where it has an amplitude and an angle. And then when we want to convert back to the time domain, you take the amplitude, put it back into the amplitude, the phase back into the phase, and it's going to have an applied frequency. By doing this, we can do all of our algebra using all of our solving of circuits using algebra rather than differential equations. And then again, here are some examples of going from the time domain to the frequency domain. Notice that you have to convert it into the cosine term because it's all based on cosine instead of sine. By doing this, we can do impedances. And so here are our our impedances are going to be re R, J omega L, or 1 over J omega C. And like I said, we're going to be doing capacitors. We're not really going to use inductors in this class. So here is an example. We have an inductor and capacitor and a sinusoidal source. So we're going to go over and we're going to convert this into a phaser and these into phasers you can see right here. So here is our VS. And then here are these impedances. And then you can kind of go through and do all of the equations. OK, so in LT Spice, we don't have phasers. And we primarily, in this class, are not going to be worried about the phase shift. So we just set up a sign, plug these in as inductors and capacitors. And then we can just plot the sinusoidal signal. And we can look at the amplitude of different points in the circuit if we need to. Uh, so we're going to be using capacitors in order to, to do filters. And we do this by solving for the impedances. So let's look really quick here. So here we have a capacitor and a resistor in series. So when they're in series, we add the two together. So we have the resistance in 1 over j omega c. We put it into 2 pi f. And these two are added together. When the frequency is really low, you see this term is going to get really large, and then the capacitor is going to dominate. So we can assume that the resistor is negligible, and we only have a capacitor. Similarly, if we have a real high frequency, this term gets small, and we have only a resistor. So in the two extremes, we get just a capacitor or just a resistor. And so when we go down here, we can see that these become high pass and uh, a high pass circuit because when this capacitor is at a low frequency, you see up here it becomes a capacitor, which is a really large impedance. So that's effectively an open circuit. So there's no voltage. And if we have a very high frequency, you see my capacitor becomes negligible. I just have a voltage divider, no frequency dependence. So this becomes a, a high pass circuit. Uh, and so we can create these circuits, and here kind of shows in LT Spice how we can plot the frequency response plots here. Okay, so now we have the concept of superposition. So superposition is that we can have a 
bunch of different voltage sources and we can solve them independently and then sub the responses together. So if we're deactivating all sources except for one, a voltage source zero volts means that it's a short circuit. A current source, if a current source is deactivated as zero current, so it's going to become an open circuit, we solve the circuit with just one independent sources, and then we sum them all together. So we do this a lot because we're going to have AC signals and DC signals. And if I have an AC signal, I'm going to be using phasers, and that depends on the frequency, which means if I have a DC signal, what frequency am I supposed to use? So I'm going to use superposition so I know what the frequency should be. So for example, if I have this one is just an AC signal, if I'm going to add it together with the DC signal, you see it just shifts it up and I get the sum of the two. So here is an example. You see it has a DC signal here. It has an AC signal here. So we're going to come in here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to short this one out. Let's show how this is done. So you come in here and this is a voltage source so this becomes a short and so now you can see that our output voltage here is going to be equal to 9 times 1 over 1 plus 1.25. See, that's just a DC voltage, okay? So then we're going to come in here, and then we're going to do the other one. So then, in that case, this becomes a short, okay? And then we're going to see that these two go in parallel. So we're going to take this resistor, combine it down, and then I'm going to have a capacitor and inductor. I'm going to do my phasers. And then when I'm all done, my V out is going to be equal to my V out DC plus my V out AC. And this piece here is going to have some V amplitude and some sign of omega T. So we're going to add the DC and the AC parts together. Okay, so now we want to look at Thevenin equivalent. So Thevenin equivalent is I can take any combination of circuit and combine it into a voltage source, which is my open circuit voltage or my Thevenin voltage, and a Thevenin resistance. And this works for any linear circuit in order to do this kind of combination. Okay, so there are three methods in order to do this. The first one is, well, we just transform all of our sources and the voltage sources end up adding up and the current sources end up adding up. And it works in a couple of cases, but it doesn't work in most cases. So we typically won't use this one. The other case is you can find the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. This method always works. Again, we're not going to use that very much in this class because the short circuit and the open circuits are kind of odd when we're doing superposition. So the best method that we're going to use in this class is the concept of using a test source. So in this case, we turn off the, and we're just after Thevenin resistance, not Thevenin voltage. So with our Thevenin resistance, we turn off the independent sources, and then we apply a test source, and then our Thevenin resistance is the voltage of the test source divided by the current of the test source. So we're going to use our test source approach. So you see this one has two independent sources. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to add in our test source which we'll just call the test. And when we do that, we are going to open this one and then create a short on that one. Now, in this case, we don't have any dependent sources. So my current, so I can just combine all these resistors. So you see that these two, this one is now in parallel with that one, which now becomes in series with that one because of this open circuit. So I really have this circuit here. And then you see, well, I just combine all these two together. And so my Thevenin resistance is 5 in parallel with 20 plus 4. So I have an 8-ohm 
uh, Thevenin resistance. Pretty easy because there wasn't any dependent sources. Now let's come over here and look at this one. Now this one has a dependent source right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to add in our test source. And then this one is over here is going to become a short. Well now, but I have this dependent source right here. So I got to figure out what the value of this VX is. Well, the VX is right over here, but there's no sources over here. So you see VX is going to be zero, which means that this is effectively going to become a short. And then my R Thevenin is equal to 5 K in parallel with 5K. So, but we had to do this and put in our test source to make sure that this became zero before we could do it. Okay, so now let's look at this test case. So again, we have a dependent source right here. And so we're going to, we're going to have to put in our test source. But in this case, when I put in my test source, you see this one over here becomes a short, which means that the VX becomes a zero. But my dependent source is between these two points, you see. So it's right here. So between VX and out. So this is really means VX minus V out. So in that case, you can kind of see that when I come in here and I put in a test voltage of one volt right here I get some voltage across there so then this voltage right this current right here is going to be the point one times the voltage at vx which is zero minus the voltage at out which we defined as one so this minus one so then we have to calculate what this current is so this current is going to be equal to this current and that current so it's going to be a this one's coming in so it's negative point one and this current is going out, so it's 1 over 1,000. So my total current is 0.01 plus 1 over 1,000, or 0 0.101. And so in this case, my Thevenin resistance is 9.9 .9 ohms. You see, it isn't this. So if this was an open circuit, it would be 1,000. But it wasn't 1,000. It was closer to uh, the 10. So you can kind of see this is how we did our Thevenin equivalent with the dependent source, and we actually had to use the test source, and there was no way to combine all the sources to get this to work out.